getting pretty close. So we're just about to glue that there into the bulkhead, um, which is our main return line. And then we'll have to do this algae scrubber bit here and all of the plumbing for the abyss down in there, which will be probably quite difficult. But everything else that you can see is already now glued and finished. So where are we up to? We have one drain, one return to go. Getting there, getting there. Only one casualty so far. Your thumb. Your thumb. <laughs> it's alright, it wouldn't be a, you know, a high quality reef tank if it didn't have some blood, sweat and tears in That's it. That's it. Plenty of tears. <laughs> <laughs> so when we dry fit all of the fittings, which is very important to do, particularly in a super intricate sump design like this, Occasionally, when you then go to disassemble it to begin the gluing process as we're in right now, some bits of the plumbing, like little bits like this, where it's hard up against two fittings, it can be almost impossible to get them back out again, um, which is to be expected. We get, we've got, so far we've gotten almost all of them out, but this one just wasn't worth the effort to get it out. It's in there just too tight. But there is a solution to getting it out. You drill a hole with a dr drill through the pipe like that, and then you get a long screwdriver like this, stick it through the hole, and all of a sudden, you can use your feet. <laughs> Bam. With leverage, and you get it out. Now, obviously, we have sacrificed this little bit of pipe, but that's okay. We can use this as a template to cut another bit. You should always have plenty of extra pipe. Better to sacrifice this much pipe than to sacrifice the fitting. Uh, this is super cheap. These are not super cheap. Um, and we've got meters and meters of pipe left over, so uh, yeah, just a little little tip. Just to confirm, he does have a license to use that drill. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Alright, so we're in the final stretch. Uh, almost 95% of it is now glued, and we've just glued this part here together. And this is my Abyss A200 pump, which I've done a video on before. And what we're doing here is we're going 40 mil straight out of the Abyss, which is the diameter of the, uh, the outlet of the abyss, so um, you know, maximum flow available from the impeller. And that goes into this 40 mil T, where it reduces into 32 and 32. And for the entire sump, all the rest of the plumbing is in 32 mil. The reason why we're splitting it like this into this uh, ribbed soft tubing is because it's really, really tight inside the sump. And we've got these two bulkheads here, feeding both feeding manifolds. One feeds this reactor and then the other one feeds the main manifold with the algae scrubber and the um, UV and they both then return up to the top of the display but each of these is going to have to essentially be like that to get into where the bulkheads are. Um, you'll see once it's in place but there was really no way to do it with regular fittings. We would have been using 390s in series which just restricts the flow way too much. When you've got these gradual curved flex tubing, you can get in much tighter places with having a, a lot less impact on the flow um, that, or, than a regular hard 90 fitting would have. So it looks kind of funny, but uh, it's gonna get the job done and allow us to get it uh, in the sump in tight places and make it work properly. Um, and importantly, this is a union here. So for serviceability of the pump, I can unscrew this to remove it all uh, and get the pump out. Um, can I, of course, this flex tubing is only connected by um, uh, nylon hose clamps, so they can be uh, easily uh, removed as well to get all this out too and disassemble it. Uh, when you are building plumbing, you've always got to think about how can it be disassembled. All right, it's finally done. It was a big effort. Uh, not much effort on my part, mostly a lot of effort from Jack <laughs> Cullen, so thanks um, heaps for, for your expertise and help. Uh, no I, I problem. I've been able to do it to this standard. I'll always bleed own. for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, the casualty is Jack's thumb. <laughs> R.I.P. Jack's thumb. Uh, we ripped the nail off it. Very, very ouchy. Um, <laughs> but I think the result was worth it. Jack, do you think the result was worth it? <laughs> Definitely, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, it, the straight lines are straight. The 90 degree angles are 90 degrees. Uh, the plumbing is complex and intricate but highly functional. And yeah, let me give you a tour of exactly how it works. So starting in the return chamber with the Abyss A200, obviously that sucks in water and pushes it straight up. 
as I showed you before, there's a T fitting coming out of that abyss to feeding both of our return bulkheads here. Um, so in there, there's the Sanking flex hose. Uh, it's like a ribbed flexible hosing, which was an absolute lifesaver. There's no way we could have done it without that um, in such a tight space. I'll follow this one first. So this uh, is obviously a true union um, or, uh, valve, so you can open and close the flow. Um, but it, you can also unscrew them on either side of the valve, meaning that the, it can be wherever there's one of these, it's like a union that can be disassembled, which is very important. Every single one of my plumbing runs has one or multiple unions on it. So the whole thing can be disassembled and the, and the sump removed if necessary. So following this, uh, flow comes up, back, tees through a um, 32 mil to 20 mil reducer into this one, which feeds this reactor down up through the reactor and then straight back down into uh, the return. So this will probably be set to quite a low flow based off this fitting here, something like that, because this reactor won't, it's just a fluidized media bed reactor, it'll probably have carbon in it, something like that. So it won't need high flow. And it's just taking a, a little, it's sipping off this main return line. Uh, so you can see the main return line goes along the back, back here, back here into this first um, bulkhead fitting here, goes up into the tank, straight up and out to the left. All right, so that one's pretty simple. It's a just a return drain with a single bulkhead, um, uh, sorry, with a single uh, T off feeding one reactor. So a mini manifold, let's call it. The other one, as we can see, comes up 90, 90, 90 to get us to the back there because we need all the room we can. Here's where the union is. Um, or the union valve, so that can be disconnected on either side of this valve. And then it goes into uh, a T fitting similar to what we did over here. It's a 32 mil to 20 mil T, um, what's 32 mil straight through and 20 mil T uh, into this reactor. And this is my custom waterfall algae scrubber. So if I remove the hood, you'll see how it works. The, the hood just lifts up like that, rotates, and you can see, this is how I'll tune the flow for this reactor with this valve just here. And this is the slot pipe where the screen of the algae scrubber will be hanging. And that will be just push fit, not glued, right there. Um, and so when I'm maintaining, uh, servicing it and I need to clean the screen, I'll just literally either take this cap off and slide the screen out or pull the whole thing out like that uh, with the screen included. Uh, we'll just see what's easier once I get it up and running, but I've got options there. And of course, to stop water spraying everywhere, turn off the flow with this. Um, and then when it's all back together, that just comes on like that. Uh, there we go. All right. From that T, it continues behind the roller mat, comes out here, and we've got this manifold. The first offtake comes down into the UV, and the next two are both spare. So these are not currently plumbed, and it just ends in a dead end. We've left enough pipe here that if we wanted to cut this, we could and extend the manifold for future things, but currently I don't even have purposes for these two. They're just there for um, just in case. Um, so I think we're good from that front. The UV, again, we've got another union um, valve or true union, open close there and can be unscrewed here to disconnect the UV through the UV up. And this is upside down. <laughs> That's all right. We can swap this around. Let's do it live on camera as a demonstration. So I'll just disconnect. Jeez, who did that? <laughs> um, this is a flow meter. All right, so sorry we had to cut there because we needed four hands, but uh, the um, flow meter is now up the right way. We had it upside down. So let me tell you about this flow meter. The water comes down over this side. The water comes down into the UV, fills the UV, and then back up. And the flow meter, as you can see, 
gives us an indication of the flow coming out of the UV, which is really important for tuning the UV for your given purpose. Um, so once we've got this wet and up and running, I'll, I'll show you this in more detail, but really cool brand new fitting from uh, the boys at Sanking. So big thanks, Will, for um, sh helping me out and suggesting to use that on my UV. I can't wait to see it in action. As we come through this flow meter, it will go through here, another union, so we can disconnect the UV from both here and here, and can, again, shut off the flow um, if necessary, like that, um, through here. And we had a fairly complex little bit here that we could have done with fittings, but we decided that it would have just been more, more work than it was worth to put all the extra fittings in here and probably reduce the flow more than was necessary. So we just went with another piece of this ribbed hosing um, and yeah, it just got us through that little join super effortlessly and easy into the bulkhead there. Um, and that's a, a 90 bulkhead. And then that goes straight up on the left-hand side of the overflow all the way up and out again. The two in the middle are our main drain on the left and the emergency on the right. Now, obviously, those have not been cut yet. They're not actually going to be that high. Um, we'll cut them closer to the point of filling the tank. And once the acrylic panels are in, that will be covering that overflow. But um, yeah, they're, they're just there for now. Uh, I've got fittings there to make the main drain a Durso and just a little grating on top of the emergency there. This bulkhead, the, uh, the first in from the right hand side where my hand is, is the main drain. And that comes down, goes into a 90. There's a union there behind the roller mat so it can be disconnected from the tank and then goes into that uh, ball gate valve. Um, this is a really highly accurate valve, um, even more accurate than this style, uh, and it allows for really fine-tuned control on the flow on the main drain. And then that goes down into the sump, into the roller mat. On the other side, we have the emergency drain that comes down here, across, the only 45 used in the entire system is used just here to skip us around uh, this first return across and then down a union, of course, so that it can be disassembled and into uh, this uh, the skimmer chamber. And that's just uh, doesn't have any pipe on the other side of this bulkhead. So if this is running, it'll make a lot of noise, but I don't intend for my emergency to be running except in an emergency. So that's fine. I have one more bulkhead here, which has no targeted purpose currently. So we just put a piece of pipe and a, um, a cap on it that's not glued. It's just sitting there to uh, just cover the hole. Uh, th that's for future expansion. So yeah, that's the plumbing. Uh, obviously it was a lot of work getting uh, this all together. Uh, required a lot of skill. And amazingly, we only did two trips to get all of the plumbing required. So the, we got 80, 90% of what we needed the first trip uh, and then returned some stuff and swapped it over for a couple of the things we needed on the second trip and that's now done. So getting plumbing of this complexity done in only two trips to uh, New Life Aquarium in Keys Brother, Keysborough where you can buy all of this amazing stanking flow color plumbing. Uh, I've gone with obviously gray and blue, but it comes in red, white, orange, gray, and clear now. They have a lot of fittings in clear as well. So you can mix and match and get whatever color scheme you want. Um, yeah, shout out to Will. Thanks so much for your support and expertise in choosing some of these parts and especially the recommendation on the, um, uh, on the, the ribbed hosing and the um, uh, flow meter. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to leak test it, fill it, and see it all in action. I'm, I'm sure there'll be no leaks, <laughs> fingers crossed. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, what else is there to say other than that it just looks awesome? Um, I mean, Will even helped me get blue handles on all of these great fittings. They, they normally come with red handles, but he was kind enough to swap those over for me to the blue ones so it all matched. Um, so, yeah, that's something else that I'm really, really happy about. So I've got the, the front acrylic panel here that will be right there. Uh, there's two side ones coming. Obviously, they'll be black. I haven't peeled the paper off this yet. And when they're in place, 
then we will cut these um, to size. They won't all be this tall, obviously. These will all be a little shorter, and these two will be much shorter down somewhere down here. But um, yeah, we'll do that once the, um, the acrylic panels are in place covering the overflow. And uh, I've gone with this um, random flow nozzle. Um, again, this is Sanking Plumbing, so it fits perfectly into the Sanking 32 mil, which is what we've run with for the entire system. Um, and uh, the lock line can be you know, pointed in whatever direction you want. Um, it was a close call between the random flow and the duct build. Uh, I could change it in the future. You can just swap out the front parts, but I went with random flow uh, for now, um, mostly on a coin flip. flip. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, um, I'm really happy with the plumbing. Big thanks to everyone who helped me out with it. And uh, if you've got any questions about the plumbing, um, Post them down in the comments below. Be keen to hear your thoughts. Um, I know it's tight and complex, but you know we're working with the constraints of what we've got. But uh, given those constraints, I couldn't be more happy with the result. And I'm pretty sure we've covered off all of the future expandability that I could possibly want with the manifold. We've covered off maintenance, being able to unscrew all those unions and cut off all the flow and remove the sump if necessary. It's all able to be disassembled. So yeah, I think we've thought of pretty much everything. Um, and so, yeah, really happy with it. And uh, if you like this kind of content, you want to follow along as we take the next steps, which will be um, gluing up the overflow. Uh, yeah, gluing up the the, manif the acrylic. Gluing up the acrylic on the overflow, and um, putting in sand and filling it with water. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's all for today. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now. Sick pan. <laughs> <laughs>